joined today by Peter Warns, and we're following up on his presentation at the Morningstar Individual Investor Conference, where, Peter, you covered a lot of ground there, ranging from the broader macro thematic things through to some of the more micro Australian centric topics. Now, we can just start on, on some of the, the big picture items that you're, you're covering off there. Yeah, Glenn, the big picture is that, you know, uh, Economics 101, demand and supply uh, affects all markets and it, it, will, it will play itself out. Uh, and even the White House should understand that. Um, so from, a, from the equity market side, demand has exceeded supply for many, many years now. Uh, driven by improving fundamentals, and now those fundamentals basically peaking, high GDP growth, high earnings, uh, uh, corporate earnings growth, and they look like they're starting to peak. That has been a, a very, very fundamental uh, demand driver uh, for uh, equities. Overlaying that, you've had um, a, a very, very significant increase in uh, buybacks and dividends, but more buybacks. Uh, $800 billion to the year ended uh, August, and by uh, the end of the year, estimated to be nearly a trillion. We've even seen more just lately. I think just this week we've seen BHP with another $100 million buyback announced. Yeah, well, the, the, the management have understood to get a better bang for your buck, get run for short term, give the money back to shareholders, that's, that attracts them to the market. <clears throat> so a demand... Uh, another slice of, of uh, a demand force, if you like, um, overlaying the improving fundamentals. So that's been there, but then that's unsustainable. Uh, U.S. corporates uh, in the uh, in the year uh, again to to August and September, they had paid out over 100 percent of operating earnings in buybacks and dividends. Unsustainable. And then you've also had a very very major switch from active to passive um, uh, managers. That flow of funds, whilst not necessarily a driver of demand, but don't forget when you have passive managers, they've got to be 100% invested, so they replicate the benchmark. And so that cash that might have been held by an active manager as an asset allocation has gone into the market as well. So those three demand drivers have pushed the markets to record levels. Two of them are unsustainable, the last two, um, the passive management and and the um, uh, and buybacks, and the fundamental drivers are starting to weaken. So are you seeing potentially that you know, if, say, dividend yields for equities markets are going to decline looking forward, more than likely, does that mean a bond is fixed income potentially going to become more attractive if yields there are going are going up? Well, potentially yes, uh, uh, Glenn, because you know GFC post GFC. Um, investors were getting basically nothing for cash, very little for bonds because interest rates were so low, and you were pushed further and further out the risk curve to get a, a, a yield. Now, what will happen is that, but be careful because don't forget, if you buy a bond, you, you won't take a capital loss if you, unless you hold it to maturity. So don't go and buy a 30-year bond because you won't be holding that to maturity. Stay short, very short, in other words, two, maybe five years, but I'd be waiting a little because these bond yields are going to, going to push up and then probably, you know, six or nine months down the track, um, look to, to, to position yourself in, in, in a bond. But, um, but you could go in, in there now and nibble. Um, again, in the hybrid space, you, the, the, the CBA pearls, you know, those type of things, and there'll be more supply of that coming. Look at those situations, particularly the ones that aren't so much equity related, more debt related. On, and higher up in the capital structure. So there's, there's a couple of uh, you know, uh, opportunities coming and investors are going to get a bit more return for their, their money, but make sure that you have a look at the risk-adjusted you know, rates of return, not the, um, the headline rate of return. Sure. And also just turning to the, the local household level, you spoke about that and how the rising costs for Australian households uh, in tandem with a time when we're seeing flatlining wage growth. Mm. What, were you, what were you saying there? Well, Glenn, it's all about GDP growth and, and the biggest uh, contributor to GDP growth in, in, Western, in Western developed uh, economies um, is household consumption. Household consumption is 24-7. That's what you've got to stimulate 
And, for, and, and, that, and, and if you stimulate that and sustain it, then that will be a very, very major foundation stone for your GDP growth. Uh, at the moment, and, and we, I asked the question of the audience, how many people think that their household expenses are going up at the inflation rate of 2% and there was not one person that put a hand up. Um, and that's the, that's the reason why uh, this, this is a serious situation because, as I said, the household consumption is, is so significant. And so what the government should be doing is stimulating household consumption by a meaningful cut in personal tax. Probably won't happen, but that's what should happen. It's, it, we sh don't worry about um, it, cutting corporate tax uh, rates and what have you. Consumption drives investment. Investment has never driven consumption. Any advice in this video is general advice prepared by Morningstar without reference to your financial objectives, situation or needs. You should consider the advice in light of these matters and any relevant product disclosure statement before making any decision to invest.